Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, a new out the front from Prometheus Design Works, a couple of oldies but goodies in the state of the collection, and 10 amazing hollow grinds. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Ty. And this was a comment on Thursday Night Knives that uh, that didn't go up live, but it it uh, it seems to be a sign of things. This is what I was reading from this Thursday Night Knives. Uh, the, the topic of conversation that night was, is the holy knife trinity still valid? Uh, that is Strider, Chris Reeve Knives, and uh, Hinderer. Are they the three best knives still for the hard use? Uh, modern tacticals losing all respect for hinderer knives says ty uh, with his latest bs involving cease and desist letters and lawyers over well-known issues that the brand has been having since at least the time i started collecting them a year ago i will not be buying any more unless his attitude changes it's completely unacceptable strider is a total con artist grifter and valor thief and chris reeve knives makes just overpriced knives that i don't care for and my only comment for that is, boy, things are really changing around here. Uh, we had some pretty interesting ideas of what the new triumvirates are, and we'll get to that. But first, a pocket check. Today, I've been carrying the Off-Grid Enforcer XL. Uh, this knife here, oh, these, this is my little triumvirate I'm moving. Uh, this knife here is a an absolute beast. Okay, so this is my... Um, new version of it this was sent to me by off-grid knives uh by carry over there great guy uh by the way we do have an affiliate link which will uh, roll up here in a second but this knife is uh the new version of what i have always called my car knife it's a big four inch yes i'll say it reverse tanto blade here uh with a very robust handle and a glass breaker that's why i keep one in my car the one i keep in my car is in d2 this is a new version this is limited edition it's called the red dawn edition and you can see why you can see those strands of red running all the way through that uh g10 really beautiful and also named after one of my favorite movies from the 80s red dawn where a bunch of teenagers have to defend their hometown and in fact their home country uh from the ruskies who are invading great movie they redid it with thor it wasn't as good uh, and it was the North Koreans invading. So uh, the first one rings true to me. Uh, this knife here, uh, really in 154 cm, is is the perfect expression of this knife, as far as I'm concerned. Big and hard use. You want a tough blade steel like 154 cm that keeps a great edge, takes a great edge, is easy to sharpen, but is tough. Uh, and that's what you want from a big bruiser like this. Uh, that's why. That's another reason why I keep it in the car. Obviously for the glass breaker, but. This knife in hand has very great texture and is just big. And with gloves on, you can really get a good grip on it. If you needed this in emergency, in an emergency uh, that you might come across uh, whilst in your car, in your truck, whatever, camping, anywhere you are and you forget and you need a knife, this is an outstanding one. And I've just been uh, really enjoying carrying it because... Um, one more thing before I move on from this. The original version has really rough texture. I mean, the diamond knurling is, it comes to sharp points in each little diamond nub. Here on the new version of the XL and of the smaller uh, EDC version of this, they've knocked down the peaks of those diamonds so that it's not going to shred your pants as much and it's going to feel more comfortable in hand. So I love this thing. It is the Off-Grid Knives uh, XL Enforcer Red Dawn Limited Edition. You must check it out. Okay, uh, next one, uh, no great surprise. I've been carrying in my front left pocket uh, in the nice little leather pocket sheath uh, that comes with it, the Jack Wolf Knives Laid Back Jack. This is the second release from Jack Wolf Knives. And man, Ben over there, Ben Belkin is just killing it. He's killing it. He's got six models already produced, releasing one per month uh, between April and I guess November. And this is the second release. And it happens to be um, 
my favorite so far. I love the Gunstock Jack, the first one that came out, the uh, Sharpshooter. But I have a soft, uh, soft spot in my heart for the Swayback Jack with that beautiful um, Warncliffe blade. And I really like how he refined the design. He took a, a lot of the sway out of the back, and I appreciate that. I, I find some Swayback's handles are a little bit too curved up. This is perfection. And so is that M390 a uh, full height hollow ground blade. It is a slicer and what a great little utility tip uh, you have there. Look at this, look at the size difference here. That's that's some contrast. Okay, so to round it out and to show uh, the ultimate contrast is the fixed blade of the day. And today I was carrying my prized Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo. Uh, Eric Kramer, uh, a sort of a legend in the small fixed blade uh, self-defense knife world made this and man i love this thing so i ordered this from him after he came on the show actually i ordered it from him right after we stopped recording i'm i'm so in love with this and many others of his knives um i but this is my favorite for sure uh he calls it a persian i call it a clip point but uh hey you know he made it so he gets to decide. So a uh, an upswept Persian blade meant for business. This is meant for self-defense. Uh, it's very thin uh, in the um, in the handle department and rounded and big enough to get a four finger grip, even if your hands are larger than mine. But this is a really excellent blade for just uh, stashing on your person. You can see here. Uh, if if you can see here on this scale, this is the scale that sits against my body. Yesterday, I took a hike with this and you can see how uh, some, the micardo that was touching my skin is darker. This was below the kydex. And uh, so this is the kind of thing I love about micarta, this this patina, this natural patina, uh, very thin, slicey, hollow grind. That is the theme of the day. We're talking about hollow grinds. And this one does have a nice thin, slicey, hollow grind. And then uh, I asked him to sharpen the swedge. And of course, the swedge comes to a very ob oblique point. So, And then when you put an edge on that, uh, it's not a slicing edge. It's a gouging, tearing, slashing edge. Uh, or just an edge to make that very tip more diamond-like and easier for, uh, for thrusting uh, maneuvers. So I love this knife. Great, great, excellent uh, um, uh, fixed blade that you can carry on your person all the time. That's a three and a half inch blade. And um, that's also a good utility blade though with that sharpened top wedge. Uh, maybe some of the utility is is removed. Now, as I, as I remove my pocket check knives, I'm going to close the uh, laid back jack in front of the mic so you can hear the walk and talk. Oh, gotta open it again and close it. Ah, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben, for making such awesome slip joint knives, modernly interpret interpreted. Okay, Inter interpreted. Sorry, sorry, Dad. If my dad's listening, he's like, "What did I? What did I do? Spending money on this kid's education?" Uh, you let me know. Call the listener line seven two four four six six four four eight seven, and let me know what you were carrying today. Uh, let me know what your favorite knives are lately. I love these kind of uh, comments. I love getting the ideas from from you all. For instance. Uh, it seems apparent that I need to get a shaman in my life at some point. I still haven't, uh, but this is something that people uh, tell me I need. There are some others, the beluga, et cetera, et cetera. So I do a lot of talking about knives. You talk to me about knives. Tell me what I should be checking out. Um, okay, so uh, we are coming up on the third Thursday of the month, and uh, that means it's giveaway time. On Thursday Night Knives, tomorrow night, our Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway uh, this is the last time you'll see me showing this off. I'll keep it brief because I've been showing it a lot. This is the Shielden Boa. Comes in a nice Cordura uh, sheath, uh, if that's your thing. Uh, but in case it's not, it has a pocket clip. Uh, this is a really uh, cool Tonto, clip point Tonto. That's what I'm calling it. It is a clip point Tonto because you see that clip up the front, but then look at the edge. That's a long Americanized Tonto. Uh, this was a donation to the channel uh, by Dave of This Old Sword Blade Reviews for this very purpose to give away, and we're proud to do so, though this is one that has been sitting on my uh, Not My Knife shelf, which I have uh, for knives and on loan, etc. knives I'm going to give away, and this is one that has received a little bit of attention from me because 
it's so unique, but uh, very utilitarian. Like I love the, I, I have not used it, worry not, but I love this right here. To me, uh, that secondary Tonto edge up, up front just looks like it has a million and one uses. I love the way it looks too. You know, that's uh, very important to me with the contoured G10 scales, multi-layered with, uh, what is that? Sort of uh, ochre, gray, and green and black, something like that. Very camo uh, and very beautiful. So this will be the giveaway knife tomorrow. And this, uh, by the way, is in... Oh, D2 Steel. D2 Steel on bearings. Shield and Knives, it's a new brand. And man, they are killing it. I look forward to seeing, hopefully they do some OEM work for some of the talented new designers coming out because I think the quality of their of their knives uh, that, that are coming out under their own shingle are really, really good. This is the the third shing, uh, third shield and I was going to say shingle third shield and we've had come through here. So uh, stay tuned tomorrow night, Thursday night knives uh, for the giveaway of that uh, shield and boa. The quickest way to go over there is to go to the knife junkie.com slash Patreon, or you can scan the QR code right over here that Jim handily put up on screen. I think that's cool. Uh, modern age, you know, uh, scan the QR code or just go to the knife junkie.com slash Patreon. See what you have to offer. Uh, again, that's the knife junkie.com slash Patreon. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Our friends over at Prometheus Design Works have an impressive new knife out. Now, I think their, <clears throat> excuse me, I think their work is really cool. I especially like their use of um, teravantium. That's that dendritic cobalt alloy that they use on some of their knives that's completely uh, corrosion resistant. I, I think innovations like that are cool. I think proprietary um, materials are interesting and add a little mystique to knives. I'm not crazy about proprietary hardware, gotta say, uh, but everything else proprietary I like. Uh, so Prometheus is coming out with an out the front that is just, man, it is very appealing. I have to admit, it's the most appealing, uh, besides that shoot knife they came out with, the AT something something. Uh, this knife is the most appealing on a visual level to me. This is the crystallization of all of their little design um, signatures all into one knife. And it happens to be a really cool tactical out the front Bowie. And uh, I'm loving it. It's called the Audax. Um, and I'm getting more and more excited about automatic knives as we come towards, as we slowly move towards July 1st, which is the date in my state where I get to walk around with automatic knives. Uh, very thrilled about that. And this uh, this is another one that's on the list for possible acquisitions so that I can walk around well-equipped when I start taking advantage of that new law. Uh, it, we have the um, spine-mounted slide with a glow-in-the-dark dot, which is cool. That's uh, that's a titanium slide. We have M390 blade steel, uh, you know, which we've all come to, to know and trust. And uh, and contoured aluminum with all of the fluting and contouring and profiling that you expect from Promethe uh, Prometheus Design Works. Um, I am excited about this for a couple of reasons. A, it's just a great new out the front. I, I, we don't see enough clip point out the fronts, I believe. And uh, it is a unique look. I have a couple of out the fronts from uh, from Microtech that I love. Uh, but they have issues and and some of they're a little bit older and I'm I have not branched out in in the OTF world uh, to discover new and great. And I know there are a bunch outside of Microtech. I've been watching it happen. But since for so long, I couldn't carry them here. I kind of put them on the back burner. But now I'll get to experience uh, all these OTFs in a new kind of way. And this one is especially uh, exciting to me. Um, and it will also mark when I get this. It will also mark the first uh, Prometheus Design Works knife in my collection. So looking forward to this. Also looking forward to seeing if they use that uh, teravantium and and uh, and other material changes. 
Should be very cool. That's the Odd X out the front from Prometheus Design Works. Thank you, Prometheus. All right, next up is very underwhelming news from Zero Tolerance, uh, and that is that the Zero Two Two, a two hundred dollar two inch bladed knife that came out in twenty nineteen, uh, they're now coming out with it with a copper show scale. Yeah. So you'll you'll note the stink in my voice, but Zero Tolerance has really let me down. And maybe they've let you down, too. Uh, they really had a good thing going. Uh, really making some robust, well-engineered uh, knives right here in America. Maybe maybe it was no longer worth their shekel to do so. Uh, but they've really slacked in the past couple of years. They've come out with the 308. And, and I, I don't mean to sound like a spoiled Westerner here. Uh, but let's just let's just uh, let's keep the logic internal. They started uh, with a reputation for ultra. Um, hard use, robust designs um, coming from some top designers and makers. And uh, they just started petering out. And now it, the releases are far and few between and, and or few and far between and oftentimes just overdone and not appealing. And and to me, this 022, this was kind of uh, they came out with this, I believe, when they came out with a 308 kind of gun themed and such. And uh, I was shocked at how much they were charging for this tiny little knife. And and now after, you know, a marked silence, they come out with, hey, we got some good news. We're putting a copper scale on the 022. To me, it's kind of like this is the kind of news you bring out with other better and more interesting <laughs> news. Uh, but, hey, you know, I'm not here to just, you know, criticize and be a critic. I, I have a, a small prized collection of ZTs. I've got five that I've kept in the collection that I that I love. They're, they're the collaborations with Sinkovich and Emerson and Onion, but he did some, they did some uh, collaborations with, with uh, Les, Les George and, and others. So they do have a great past. I really, I'm rooting for ZT. I, I really hope they come back with some force because we need it. We need it, frankly. Uh, we've got all of these incredible um, Chinese makers like Shielden and Riot and Savivi and you name it. And uh, we're kind of getting buried here. We, we could use uh, a ZT to come back. So anyway, if it interests you uh, and if you like the little 022 from ZT uh, as, as maybe a, a, a placeholder, a, an appetizer until they come out with something uh, interesting again, uh, check it out. They got copper scales. All right. Still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at, uh, at two oldies but goodies that didn't quite make the 10 amazing hollow grinds uh, list because they are one of them. Well, they're hard to get, I guess. Um, all that and more right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. Do you use terms like handle the blade ratio, walk and talk, hair pop and sharp, or tank like? Then you are a dork and a knife junkie. Okay, so we're going to be talking about hollow grinds today, and I wanted to stick to um, the, uh, like the the deepest, most most hollow ground hollow grinds that I have here, and that I think represent a, a, a good spread of the market. Uh, however, there are a couple that I wanted to show off in the state of the collection here that deserve mentioning, uh, but don't don't quite make it into the list for one reason. Or another. The first one is the Strider SMF. Uh, Strider came up in the comments earlier when I talked about my uh, favorite comment of the week. And uh, if you don't know, um, Mick Strider is uh, was a guy who was uh, embroiled in some controversy early on, but somehow got a pass. I'm not sure why. I guess maybe it's because he makes a very uh, popular knife uh knives in the strider knives uh but he he's known for i guess saying he was a navy seal when he really wasn't or uh, let's just say I, I don't know if seal was the thing but inflating his military record um you know beyond beyond the deserved and so people people never looked kindly on that hence the comment grifter etc now the reason i liked that as a comment is because it's showing how things have shifted uh when Luxury knives were, were starting to become a thing. Luxury folders were starting to become a thing. Luxury production folders, tactical, high-end, hard-use folders. The holy trinity was Hinderer, Chris Reeve knives, and Strider. And uh, things have changed. People, people have moved on. 
And not that these aren't still prized and respected, but so much more has happened in knives. I've heard uh, Grimsmo, Shiragorov, and Koenig is the new try. You know, a lot of people have their new triumvirates, but I still believe that Strider, despite any personal things, I'm I am able to look past the personal when it comes to art and artwork and design in this case and production uh, if it's good stuff. And I still think Strider is good stuff. So I don't really care about Mick Strider. I'd love to have him on the show, but I don't think he would come on. Uh, so the Strider SM, SMF, that's the big one. You can tell because of the three screws on the top as opposed to the SNG, uh, is, a, is a knife that I've had. Uh, I had the Lego version. I got rid of it. It had a very wedge-like flat grind. Um, I got rid of it for a number of reasons. The ergonomics were poor. The lockup was bad. I could never get rid of the lock stick. And the uh, cutting, was, the cutting uh, edge was oblique. Uh, so I ended up getting rid of that. I got this one later. This is a concealed carry, a CC version, meaning it's thin and it's contoured um, when you look at it uh, in cross-section there. So it fits in the pocket in the hand much easier than that blocky Lego edition. And then this one has a hollow grind. That's what I was so excited about with this one. It's got a hollow grind. And the guy I got it from, that's uh, uh, Terrell Todd, Zelric42 of Todd Knife and Tool. He uh, he put a, a wicked edge on it. So, so it's backed up there and it's hollow ground. So that turns the Strider, which was basically a folding axe, at least the one I had, uh, into a proper usable slicing knife. And I I credit that hollow grind. So very nice hollow grind on this uh, for a big, thick SOB. I mean, look at that thing. It is a thick chunk of steel. Uh, but thanks to that hollow grind, it gets to a pretty decent behind the edge measurement, especially with that tall, wicked edge on there. So that's uh, that's the first one. The second one is a um i know that this gentleman who made this knife uh, that's douglas esposito of attention to detail i know he's uh he's uh knows mick strider from back in the day and uh this guy's a marine um and i know he took some influence from strider knives this is a very early mark one large mark one from attention to detail mercantile this is before he went to bearings and before he had his detent dialed in and all that but i still love this knife and prize it and i bought it from him right after we had him on a on a town hall and he showed this one off and this this huge micarta natural micarta inlay on both sides done with a panograph is perfect and now you know he's moved on he has cnc and uh, is just doing crazy textures on his handles and making these beautiful uh mark one models and he has a, a couple of other models now uh, just beautifully done, uh, but this early model I I really like. It's got it's got uh, none of the refinement of the new ones, um, but all of the charm and the good looks. And this hollow grind is just extreme. So somewhat thin blade stock. You're saying what's the measurement? I'm saying I don't know. I don't have my calipers, but a thinish blade stock, but with a very broad. That's a and like an inch and a little bit more than an inch and a half broad and more than an inch of that is hollow ground. And it comes to a sickening behind the edge uh, thinness, which makes this an extremely sharp and slicey knife. Um, when I was at Blade Show last year, I got a chance to check out a bunch of his other knives and it, his grinding is just is is incredible. And uh, he can get that hollow grind very, very thin and and. The point of that is slicing and utility, uh, slicing for cutting sake, uh, when it comes to utility. But it's not just, it's not just slicey. It also gives the blade a long life, especially if you have a nice cutting, uh, uh, sharpening choil here. Now, here with that plunge grind, he comes right up against the edge. You could sharpen that and move that edge up a bit. And since it's so thin, it would still be nice and slicey. Uh, but that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that that hollow ground blade, but also how it how it interacts with that plunge grind. On this, I would say that plunge grind could move back further if I were to uh, you know nitpick, um, and that would give you even more life on that hollow grind. 
Just love the hollow ground blades. And you know, I talk a lot about aesthetics here and how things look. Uh, uh, je suis un artiste. Uh, anyway, uh, part of the hollow grind thing is the looks. I got to say, ever since I laid eyes on the Cold Steel Master Tanto with that thin hollow grind, I was like, oh my God, it's like a straight razor with a point. I love it. So yeah, the hollow grind is is uh, not only a very useful thing to have, um, you know, you don't want it if you're batoning through wood, but for pretty much everything else, if you need something that's going to cut and cut really well, hollow grinds uh, just do a, an amazing job. These two oldies but goodies did not quite make the list. The A2D, uh, this is an older version, and they're, they're quite expensive. Uh, his knives are expensive. And then same thing with striders. They're hard to get. And, and for a hollow grind, this is still pretty thick. But in this case, the hollow grind rescues the entire blade, in, in my humble opinion. So those two oldies but goodies. Uh, I was looking through the rest of my collection at, uh, at the hollow grinds, and they're fewer than I was expecting. And I think that's because um, it's easier to, in a factory, flat grind both sides of a blade as you have them moved through. Uh, a, a grinder, I think. <laughs> Speculation yet again, but that's okay. All right, next up, let's talk about these 10 amazing hollow grinds. Now, we go from super hard to find or expensive to very available and close to superior. Let's just say close to. Uh, and that is the Civivi Asticus. Now, I'm using the Asticus as a um proxy for basically all the civivi hollow grinds and they're not all equal uh, some hollow grinds are thinner than others from civivi but they seem to specialize in it and excuse me of the hollow grinds i have experienced from them this uh this asticus is by far uh the thinnest it is uh it is incredibly incredibly thin and if you can see uh, it's very apparently hollow ground. Sometimes you have to take a ruler, or sometimes I have to take a ruler, and and put it up against the edge like this, and then see, does it fit exactly, or is there a, a scoop? Now, with the Civivis, you never need to do that. You can you can tell just by looking at them, and then when you get your hands on them and feel, uh, they are exquisitely deeply done. And this one, I think this is the sharpest one, or the the thinnest uh, one I've ever experienced. I did have the, um, what is that? The dogma, which is actually now, uh, sitting on Jim's desk. So maybe he could chime in at some point, but that thing is also ridiculously sharp. And one, one great way to tell, uh, about how thin a hollow grind is besides just pinching it and feeling it with your fingers. But this, I love this. I'm going to put this up to the mic. There's just a certain sound. It sounds thin, you know, it just, it just sounds like it's ready to ready to cut. So first one here is I'm going to say all the Civivi hollow grinds, but the example I'm using is the best one I've ever personally uh, used and experienced. And that is on the Asticus. This is a great knife. Uh, the Asticus is, and you can get it. It can be had for inexpensive and you can also get it uh, for expensive with uh, damascus steel, but all these different handle materials, including wood, including, um, they're more like handle covers, including wood, all sorts of different G10s and micarta. So check out the Asticus. It's a big knife, but it's, uh, it's one you're gonna love. All right, next up, this one maybe shouldn't be on the list because uh, this is a Gen 1. Uh, oh wait, whoops, I'm out of order. I'm out of order. Uh, I'm going to go to this one next. This is the Umnumzan from Chris Reeve Knives. Um, and now, again, this is sort of a stand-in for the Umnum, the uh, Sabenza, which have very thin hollow grinds. Now, I understand that the, um, uh, what, what was it called? The other one, <laughs> the Impinda. Um, there's a third... Oh. Boy, it's on the tip of my tongue. Leave it in the comments below. But the third that looks a lot like these <laughs> and is, you know, is in the same size range as the Umnumzan and the Sabenza. I know you're screaming it. You're screaming it at your at your speakers right now or your computer. 
but it has a less thin hollow grind, that other one I'm talking about, because it's meant to be a little bit more of a robust tool than the other two. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, I have no personal experience, but I do with this and the Sebenza and and such, such nice, uh, deep hollow grinds. Um, I was going back and forth between whether I would show off this or my Sebenza 21. I'm, I have to specify it's a 21. It's not a 31. It's a 21. And they do have very, very thin blades. I couldn't tell which one was thinner, so I decided I'd trot this one out uh, to have a little more Tonto representation in this in this lineup. And we do know that Tonto representation is important here. And uh, so this one, very thin behind the edge, very uh, takes great advantage of that hollow grind and then that um, sharpening choil. So you can sharpen this up a, an eighth of an inch or so, and you'll still have something quite thin behind the cutting edge uh, to slip through material. One sort of uh, problem you might come into in into contact with with a hollow grind. We're gonna we're actually we'll take a look at that on the next knife. I won't mention that here. Uh, but yeah, the the uh, the Idaho made um, hollow ground Chris Reeve knives. Awesome, awesome. I'm I am curious to get my hands on a 31 and see how it. Uh, See how it compares. I do know that uh, uh, Chris Reeve Knives is now run by Tim Reeve, uh, Chris's uh, son, and I would like to see, like to feel, um, and I mean in a more, uh, I'd like to feel the difference between the 31 and the 21. I have picked up the 31. I, I played with it at Blade Show, but I mean to have in pocket, to own, to live with. So maybe, maybe this is something I have to do. All right, next up is one, is, this is problematic, as the kids say, because uh, for two reasons, it's a Gen 1 and is no longer hollow ground in the generations after that. Uh, and then we'll talk about the other thing in a second. Uh, so this is the AD-10 from Cold Steel Knives. Uh, okay, so the, this is the production version of the Demco Classic um, uh, Custom AD-10. And uh, by all accounts, Cold Steel did an amazing job. Let's put the ruler there. You can see this is tr very hollow ground, very deeply, very deeply hollow ground here. Um, I kind of wish Cold Steel didn't change to the flat grind on this. Um, I don't know how many they made, but this was the first release, and and they got it wickedly thin behind the edge. Now, my question is, did they change it because they thought, well, the AD10 is supposed to be a super hard use knife? Uh, which it is. It's got the triad lock. It's got very comfortable ergonomics, Contour G10, and, uh, you know, just great uh, protection for your hands forward and aft. Uh, I guess I could see why they'd want to go flat ground. Maybe maybe this hollow grind wasn't enough uh, material on the blade for how people were using it. It's fine for me, and uh, I've used this a little bit in the back 40. That's 40 feet by 40 feet, ladies and gentlemen, 40 yards by 40 yards. But uh, it, it it does work well. I, I don't know if I need the um, the flat grind. Now, maybe they also changed it for this reason. Deeply hollow ground, but thick blade stock. So when you reach the shoulder of that uh, grind on the cut, it might hang up there. Um, now, this one does have the benefit of having a pretty high hollow grind, so the transition into that shoulder isn't as abrupt as, uh, as, as like, say, the Spyderco uh, Yojimbo or something like that. But um, So I'm wondering if that's why they made that change. Plus, some people get it in their minds that they should uh, use their folders for batoning kindling and such and uh, maybe it was just getting a lot of that i mean you're kind of asking for it when you come out with the strongest lock ever you know and uh, market yourself as that people are going to go crazy on them so maybe really that hollow grind didn't make sense for something that they're advertising as as you know hard hard use look at that hollow grind though look at the light if you can't see this the light is dancing across the hollow grind on the ad10 um, mm, mm, mm. just a great knife and a beautiful, beautiful blade. That's S35 VN, by the way. All right. Yeah. S35 VN. Blade steel you may have heard of. Also on this knife and, um, mm -mm. this is the Riot K2 and just this adds something. Okay. So the hollow grind. Yes. Very, very, very thin. 
the blade extremely sharp. But what is unique about this is how beautifully done it, how, how beautiful it looks. So that is a hollow grind on the long straight of that blade. I'll try and get the light to dance on it so you can see it. And then, of course, the tip of that Americanized Tanto is flat. Um, but the, the grinder satin that they get on these blades is stunning. Look at that. Look at the grind lines on that. Just gorgeous. So you have the all of the utility benefit of this very thin hollow grind here. And then also the robust puncturing capability of the flat grind up front. But then you also have that beautiful grinder satin to look at. I could look at that all day. Uh, that's one of the things about Riot that I just, uh, you know, I, I think uh, really nudges them to the to the top of the heap. Um, I know a lot of people like to to um, uh, to rank uh, the the OEMs from China, and I I do too. Uh, and I still place Riot at the top for reasons like that. I like Riot. I like Reich. I like, um, you know, for their for their machining capabilities. I like Best Tech because they make some of my favorite OEM knives and and a, and a great variety of them very well. But um, this thing, this thing, and 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 Riot and their hollow grinds, uh, they're they're just stunning. All right, so enough about that. That's the K2. Now, uh, I really, really have gotten to the point where I I am not interested in Tonto blades that don't have a hollow straight part. I had the Civivi Brazen Tonto, great knife, really great knife, quite quite a thin flat grind, but still a flat grind. I want to see um, this transition here. I want to see on a Tonto, I want to see the transition from this flat up front to that hollow. You'll get that curved line there. That's what I always want to see. That curve represents that hollow grind. It reveals that hollow grind. It looks cool. It also, the, the extremity of the curve shows the depth of the hollow grind. And to me, mm, that is, that's what I want to see on every Americanized Tonto is that. Okay, next up is from an American OEM. That's right, an American OEM. We talked to them here on the show, uh, Josiah DeMille of millet knives came on a couple of times great guy and millet knives really doing yeoman's work out there trying to figure out how to make an american oem work and um so father and son uh, came from chris reeve knives and uh, started their own company uh making knives and machining parts and such and this was one that was designed by tj tj schwartz and was uh distributed by drop produced by millet and this is the perpetua it went away it went away and i was lucky enough to score this one because uh, a great listener and friend of the show mr filato donated it to the channel that means gave it to me and, and i really appreciate it he sent me a box of knives to check out last year some beautiful winklers and other cool knives and this was in it and he said i know you like this thing uh it's yours and Having it, I, I really, I think it is the, I'm going to say it, um, I think it's the griptilian killer. <gasps> what did he say? I really do. It, it's uh, It's got a great uh, drop point hollow grind. What do you call this blade? Sheep's foot. It's got a sheep's foot hollow grind and a very, very, very effective cutter. Very thin uh, hollow grind. You might run into that shoulder issue with this one only because it's a half height uh, hollow grind. Uh, I have not, but uh, I'm not sure what you're doing with your knives. So uh, I have not run into that. This is a great utility knife. This thing has awesome ergonomics. Um, it came in a, it came in this green and gray, uh, that hollow drop point nitro V and uh, a, an excellent axis style bar lock. Also nice clip. Um, not, not deep carry, but you don't always need deep carry, A, or I don't. And B, on a smaller knife, I prefer a clip mounted like this because this uh, swells in my palm. So it fits perfectly in my hand like that. Whereas uh, if you have a loop over deep carry pocket clip, it's more uh, on a smaller handle. It's, it's, 
hitting my hand right on the edge and not as comfortable. I love the way this thing looks as well as uh, how it works and how it cuts. Uh, a little bit more weight relief on the inside might do, but uh, they did a, a pretty thorough job. It, it does feel a little weighty, this knife, uh, by, by today's standards. And this is a knife that was made maybe two years, three years ago they stopped making it. But look at that. Look at that hollow grind. Look at that sharpening choil. Um, you, you get some life out of, out of this one. The Perpetua. Oh, by the way, that's uh, TJ Schwartz's maker mark, maker's mark. Very cool knife. I hope they bring this one back out. Uh, Josiah indicated that they were going to be making more of those. Um, and I'd love to see it. I'd really love to see it. Okay, so next up is one that you've seen a lot. This is the Jack Wolf Knives Sharpshooter Jack. Now, I chose this one over the... Um, I want to get my fingerprints off of it. Chose this over the laid back jack because it's got a taller blade. And a signature of these Jack Wolf knives is a full height hollow grind. I love saying that. It's a hollow grind that goes from uh, starts super, super duper thin down here at the cutting edge and then goes all the way to the spine. There is no flat on the blade except uh, the Ricasso area no flat on the blade also beautiful grinder satin uh just a stunning stunning knife and i i cannot i cannot get across to you how thin they get these knives i mean this here oh maybe i can let me put it up, up to the mic can you hear that <laughs> maybe maybe not sounds thin to me uh but very 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 thin and then this triangular sharpening notch here is perfect perfectly done for a long long life now this is m390 blade steel you will probably not be using this to the point where you sharpen it all the way up that sharpening notch but you could you could you could sharpen that and move that edge all the way up to the top of that sharpening notch and it's still going to be a thin slicer so this this is amazing and uh here so we see it here too on the laid back jack it's just that uh i feature this one here because of how tall that blade is now from my angle i'm going to see if i can get this uh in the camera from my angle if i look at the grind lines here let's see if you look at the grind lines you can see how dramatic that uh you can see how dramatic that uh, hollow is how deep that hollow grind goes just a just a hmm. A thing of beauty, of course, and then just a wonderful, wonderful utility uh, knife cutter. Uh, and let me tell you what I think about, since you asked, let me tell you what I think about super steels on small knives. I think super steels on small knives are the most appropriate places for the small, uh, for the super steels, because chances are you're walking around with this in your pocket. And then maybe you're walking around with this in your pocket. And more often than not, this will be the appropriate cutting tool due to who's around you, what you're doing, what you're cutting. Um, so you're going to be using your small EDC more than your big, you know, tactical knife or big EDC carry. Therefore, <laughs> you're going to be using it more. You want a, a blade steel that you're not going to have to constantly sharpen. And with this, with, with M390 or or 20 CV or these kind of blade steels with the kind of work you're going to be doing with that little utility uh, EDC folder, you're not going to need to sharpen that thing. So if it comes with a great, you know, you'll, you might drop it now and again, but if it comes with a great edge on a great steel and you're using it to remove thread or open boxes or open mail, um, chances are you're not going to have to put a new edge on the thing ever. You'll just keep it up with stropping. Um, at least that's my philosophy. What do you think? Maybe some people are like, Bob, I, I, I actually use my knives. I have to sharpen them frequently. And, and in that case, I still think that, uh, that super steels are more appropriate on small knives because you'll still have to sharpen those small knives less. Uh, all right, enough about that. Next is a, one of those big knives I was talking about. This thing has an awesome hollow grind. This is the production version of my absolute grail knife. This is the Boker Squail uh, designed by, I, I have a feeling it was originally called the Squall. I think, 
I think uh, when you buy a Charles Marlowe custom knife, this is Char a Charles Marlowe knife uh, design. If you buy a Charles Marlowe, if you're lucky enough, if you get struck by lightning and you happen to get one of his custom knives, I think it's called the Squall, not the Squail. But anyway, this is the Boker Squail. Uh, I will say it looks like an Italian racing boat to me. Uh, it's just got incredible style, just a beautiful, beautiful, intrinsically beautiful thing. You don't have to even know it's a knife to know it's a beautiful thing. Uh, but it has this recurve blade is just incredibly thin and hollow ground. So to me, this is like a, uh, yes, I said an Italian racing boat. It's also a classy assassin's knife to me because it's got that, or maybe it's that classy guy who who works the um, the illegal knife fighting gambling circuit. And you can only use folders. And this is what he uses because it's got that great um, puncturing point there uh, with this hollow ground swedge that meets that hollow ground uh, main edge. It looks like, Essentially, it's like a dagger up front. And then this recurve blade, so great at slashing, but also for cutting. You know, you, you could mangle some cardboard with this for sure. Constantly feeding the cardboard into this, uh, into that recurve on a push cut. Uh, this is this would make a great utility knife too, but it, it brings up different uh, fantasy to me. Um, so this really, really thin behind the edge hollow grind is also accompanied by a great sharpening choil. Look at where the plunge grind is all the way back here. That means you can you can sharpen this thing uh, a, a bit higher and still get a uh, wicked behind the edge uh, or, or a wicked sharp knife because it is thin behind that edge. Uh, it does thicken up a little bit right here. So you might end up taking that off. Uh, in in subsequent sharpenings this is vg10 uh, i haven't really had to put a uh, an edge on it i don't i haven't really used it much i have carried it a bit because it's just so appealing and it's uh, a nearly four inch blade this is this is such a great knife boker makes really good knives i think when i when boker came on my radar they were suffering uh, some quality control issues uh and and i think that that stink stuck for a little while uh in my mind but i realize the bokers i have and i have about five i think are really really outstanding excellent builds okay uh next up uh i mentioned earlier i mentioned the yo jimbo this is the yo jumbo uh also a great hollow grind on this if you look at it uh maybe you can't see it right now but it's a little less than half height hollow grind so it's a it's a pretty Pretty deep hollow grind, pretty steep. It, it reminds me a little bit, just a little bit uh, in concept of how the Medford knives are sharp. You got a big giant slab, like on my Praetorian that I once had. It was a giant, ridiculous blade slab of steel. And then at the very bottom, a super aggressive, deep hollow grind. Now that is the perfect example of where uh, it's super sharp and... Uh, you know, super, super duper sharp and, and thin at the edge, but so quickly and abruptly uh, flares out um, that you're going to hit the shoulders uh, when you're trying to cut cardboard with something like that. With this, you get a little bit of that, but but much less. I mean, much less. It is a thick blade stock, though. Um, and you want that for this. The intended purpose of this is as a slasher, thruster, um, you know, this is a, a self-defense tactical style knife. So you you don't necessarily you're not thinking about cutting cardboard with this. So you're not so concerned about about that shoulder. You're more concerned about something that is going to cut no matter what. It's so thin. It's going to cut basically anything if you slash at it hard enough. And then up at the tip, no swedge to keep it a little bit stout. I mean, you know, on these knives, on this Yo Jumbo and on the Yo Jimbo too. It's so, I mean, those tips are so dainty that you do have to be careful. I did drop my uh, 20 CV Yo Jimbo and knock the tip off of it. I just dropped it. It fell about 11 inches into a metal sink at work, and that was all it took. And that was 20 CV, might be a little chippy. Uh, or, or no, no, this is S30V. This is probably going to be the chippy one, if anything. But, uh, that hollow grind, very thin, very deep. So a great utility knife, um, yes, but I think 
that hollow grind being short like that is more optimized for the self-defense use of a hollow grind, uh, which is slashing and and cutting, but not necessarily worrying about going all the way through materials and how those materials uh, part. All right, last up is, this is a custom knife, and I thought I wouldn't put it in there for that reason, but it's a custom knife within reach. Uh, it's a custom knife that costs less than a number of the folding knives that I've shown you. Uh, or, or I paid less for it and got it brand new custom. And that's a BGM Quaken. BGM Knives, uh, a lot of people know him for his hollow grinds, he, uh, for his, I'm sorry, for his um, aftermarket uh, regrinds. He, uh, I, I, I want to send him, I have some knives uh, I have in the docket for him to, to hollow grind for me. But this is a beautiful knife of his own design. This was one of his first designs, I believe. Um, I'm showing it in the sheath because the sheath is outstanding. Uh, I did put the concealed carry con concepts uh, clip on there. And here we go. This knife is, uh, what did I get this in? I got this in, I can't remember what steel this is. One of his premium offerings. I remember I was like, wow, the, the knife is so inexpensive. I'm going to go all out and get the premium steel and, uh, I love his cord wrap. So I got this cord wrap with the green and the purple. I saw he had posted one with that color combo and I really liked it. Um, would I get it again? Yes, I might, but it, I might get it purple and black next time. It's, it's cool. I dig it. He did a great job on it and it's epoxy coated. So it's, it's got a great feel to it. Uh, but really what we're talking about is this, this hollow grind is just uh, nauseatingly thin. It slips between molecules, I tell you. And let me tell you something. Um, when I got this, oddly, and uh, I know this is not the case ordinarily, but oddly, the the very cutting edge wasn't that sharp. Uh, it, it was like, uh, oh, you know, like <laughs> I passed it over a, 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 a um, ceramic rod like three times and it was an absolute razor. So much so that I, I accidentally bumped it. I didn't even slice it or drag it uh, across my finger. I bumped it into my finger, just like this. Doom. And I had one of the worst cuts, and I've had many, many cuts. I had one of the worst cuts uh, I've ever had from a knife uh, from this. And 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 I, I credit that hollow grind because the actual cutting edge wasn't as acute as I thought it would be. I passed it over the stone three, three or four times. And then that's all it took. So right here, look at that sharpening notch. I love how he does this. He does these really high sharpening uh, choils. And like I mentioned, it's so thin, you could definitely sharpen it all the way up to the top if need be and have a long life out of this. Of course, I won't have to do that. This is a um, super steel. Can't remember which one it is. I'll have to look at the, the little birth card he sent. But I carry this as a utility slash tactical fixed blade. So it doesn't get lots of use um, because I don't find myself really using a fixed blade for utility that often and uh, certainly don't find myself using it for self-defense that often. Thank the Lord, our God. All right. So this is my roster of best hollow grinds. I, I, uh, I think that the type has really gained momentum in my mind uh, because of how well they cut, how great they look. And actually, frankly, they lighten the blade. Okay, so this is a Civivi Asticus. We I'm just going to Civivi hollow grind, Chris Reeve hollow grind. And I got to say cold steel hollow grind, not just this 8010, but all of their Tontos and stuff. Uh, I hope they don't turn their back on the hollow grind as they, as they go more uh, efficient with GSM. The K2 from Riot and all of their hollow grinds. There's the Perpetua from Millet Knives and TJ Schwartz. Here is the Jack Wolf Knives Sharpshooter Jack. To me, probably the most accomplished hollow grind in that it's super thin on super steel and it's all the way up to the spine. Here's the Boker Squail, the production version of my Grail knife. You have the Yojimbo or Yojumbo in this case, but they have the same hollow grind. And then here, the one that takes the absolute cake. Uh, is a custom, and that is the BGM um, Quaken. A custom knife within reach. Uh, I do recommend you check check them out. 
thank you. Thank you for coming on this journey with me through the hollow grind. I, I, um, I love them. And as I get more, I will show you more. And as I have some of my flat ground knives, hollow grind by people such as BGM uh, or others, I'll show that too. All right. Thanks for joining us on the Knife Junkie podcast. Be sure to join us tomorrow night at 10 o'clock right here on YouTube, streaming live and on Twitch and on Facebook. You can also download us uh, right here on all these podcast apps uh, so you can listen to the golden strains of the Knife Junkie podcast while you're mowing the lawn, doing the dishes, etc. Also, please become a patron member if you have the means or the inclination. You can just go right here and scan the QR code because we're very modern here, or you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Knife Junkie.